I am Elsie, welcoming you to Bible in Praise Time. And I am Miss Jane, and feeling so happy because you are listening on the radio to our program. Boys and girls, when I teach children stories and lessons from the Bible, I have a lesson about different sins that make our heart dark. One of those sins is telling a lie. Everyone has told a lie in their lifetime. And if they say they have never told a lie, then they are lying. Lying is a very sinful thing to do, and when we tell one lie, it becomes easy for us to tell another one. Lying means that you are not speaking the truth. Some people believe in white lies. That is a little lie that really doesn't matter much and doesn't hurt anyone. God says whether it's a big lie or whether a small lie, it is still a lie, and God hates lying. In 1 John chapter 1, there are many verses that talk about the truth and talk about lying. Elsie, please give the children one verse from 1 John 2, 4. Okay, it says, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And also, Miss Jane, it is one of the Ten Commandments, and it tells us not to lie, too. It is very important to God, Elsie, that we are truthful. If we lie, the good news is... We can confess the sin of lying to God and He will forgive us and cleanse our heart once again. No matter what sin we commit, if we confess it, we can get forgiveness. Listen to our song. Nothing but the truth, nothing else will do. There's something to be said for saying nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth, nothing else will do. There's something to be said for saying nothing but the truth. It's never ever right to tell a lie. That's a truth that no one can deny. So if you've got a doubt about it, don't let it out. If it's not the truth, then something will do without. Nothing but the truth, nothing else will do. Nothing but the truth, nothing else will do. There's something to be said for saying nothing but the truth. There's something to be said for saying nothing but the truth. Our story is found in Luke 10, 1 to 37. Jesus knew that he had not much longer to preach. For the time was near when he must lay down his life for the sins of the people. He therefore chose seventy other men who had followed him and received his teachings. And to them he gave power to heal the sick and to cast out evil spirits. Then he sent them out into the country east of the Jordan River to preach in the cities and villages where he would go later on. And just as the twelve disciples had gone, so these men went forth to heal the sick and to tell people that the kingdom of heaven was coming near to them. And when their errand was finished, they hurried back to Jesus, telling him that even the evil spirits obeyed when they commanded them to depart. These seventy disciples rejoiced much because they had received power to command evil spirits to obey them. But Jesus said, Do not rejoice in this, but rather be glad because your names are written in heaven. Then Jesus prayed to God the Father, and afterwards he turned to his disciples and said, Blessed are the eyes that see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see the things which you see, but they did not see them, and to hear the things which you hear, but they did not hear them. Then a wise Jew called a lawyer came to Jesus and asked a question, wishing to tempt him. He said, Master, what shall I do to inherit life in heaven? Jesus knew this man had knowledge of the law of Moses. So instead of answering the question, he asked the wise man another. He said, What is written in the law of Moses? Do you not know its teachings? The lawyer replied, Moses wrote that we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength, and with all of our mind. And he wrote that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. Jesus said, You have answered right. Do this, and you shall have life in heaven. But the man was not willing to turn away yet. So he asked Jesus, Who is my neighbor? And Jesus told him the story about the Good Samaritan. And this is the story. One day a man started to travel from Jerusalem to Jericho. As he went along the lonely road, he met some robbers. These men stopped him, took away his money, tore off his clothing, and beat him until he was half dead. Then they ran off, leaving him to lie by the roadside. 
Presently a priest came along the road, and he saw the poor man lying there. But he did not stop to help the stranger. He did not even speak to the poor man and ask if he might send some friends to aid him, but passed by on the other side of the road. After the priest had gone by, a Levite came by. When he saw the poor man, he also took no second look. He did not offer to help him. He hurried on his way, leaving the poor man to die. And no doubt the poor man would have died if a kind-hearted Samaritan had not come along the road soon afterwards. When he saw the poor man, he stopped his mule, climbed out of his saddle, and bent over the stranger to speak to him. He saw that the wounded man was a Jew. And he knew the Jews were not friendly to the Samaritans, but he knew this Jew was in deep trouble. So he poured oil upon the wounded places and bound them up. Then he gave the wounded man a drink to revive him and helped him to climb into the saddle on his own mule's back. He brought the wounded man to a sheltering place called an inn, where travelers stopped overnight. Here he took care of him until the next day. And before he started on his journey again, he gave money to the keeper of the inn and said. Take care of this stranger until he is well, and if more money is needed, I will give it when I come again. Now, asked Jesus of the lawyer, which of the three men was a neighbor to the one who was attacked by the robbers? The man who treated him so kindly, answered the lawyer. And Jesus said, Go and do as the Samaritan did. When Jesus sent out his disciples to be witnesses of him, he supplied them with the protection of his spiritual armor. He does the same for us today so that we can stand against Satan. We are no match for Satan unless we have on the armor of God stated in Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Children, read those scriptures in your Bible today. It is Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 18. Our final song tells us to put on the armor of God. <laughs> Let's pray, children. Dear Jesus, help us to stand strong in you by putting on the armor of God each morning so that we can be protected from the tricks of Satan. In Jesus' name, amen. Boys and girls, listen again next time for Bible and Praise Time with me, Miss Jane. And with me, Elsie. Goodbye. I listen to the